Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is David Clayson. Uh, it's been a minute since I've put out a video. Yeah, but my popular demand, mainly from, actually only from Jeff Williams, um, he's been bugging me for months to put out a, a video on the Passion Translation. And now the reason I'm actually doing it though is because the past few days I had a congregation member come up to me and talk. we talked a little bit about the Passion Translation and it forced me to take a look and do some research behind the translation itself. And boy, oh boy. It's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> so let's go there. Now, this, this translation was translated by this guy named Brian Simmons. This is him right here on the screen. Um, he was a missionary, is a missionary. I think he was. I'm not sure he's still a missionary. But uh, to Central America there, and just, we, I'm getting this information from the Passion Translation website. But he ministered by providing Bible translations to native people that didn't have the Bible in their own language so that they can understand and read it themselves. So that's very, that's good. That's a good thing to do. And it's, it was interesting. He, uh, one of the people's groups was located in Panama. I was born in Panama. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But the Passion Translation, um, as I got into it, as I did the research there, it popped up a lot of red flags for me uh, as I was reading into it. And even, we'll get to it here at the end, but there's, you can compare the different translations on their own website, which is, you know, pretty honest of them. I, I commend them for that. But uh, going under the Frequently Asked Questions tab on their website just gives us an idea of how he decided to translate the Passion Translation. It says this, relying on these same skills with the biblical language, linguistics, and transculturation that were honed during his time translating in Central America, Brian has sought to faithfully translate the essential message of God's Word into the contemporary, relevant language of today and adopting the same stringent guidelines used through his missionary work. So that's kind of the standard. Including teamwork and accountability. His work has been theologically reviewed by professionals such as all these professionals listed here. And so when I read this, when you read a little bit uh, in another section here too, it talks about how when he's on the missions field, you don't have a huge team of people to translate the Bible. You have maybe just a handful there. And so... A lot of times it could be just a handful of people working on it, or it can be one individual working on the translation there. Um, and anytime that happens, you should always pause at the very least. It should cause you to be careful when you're reading that translation, when one individual is the one that has the burden of translating the majority of the Bible there. Uh, because they, even when they try not to, it's hard not to put their own opinions or feelings into Scripture and have it kind of adjust how they translate there. And when you read this here, all these individuals listed, according to this website, uh, that they reviewed what he translated, but they didn't necessarily translate themselves, help them translate the Bible themselves, which it would have been better if they did, um, because then there's just more accountability in that, but instead they just reviewed it, which isn't, isn't as good. Um, so that's kind of one of the first red flags that I have there that you know, the burden of the majority of the translation of the Passion was fell on Brian himself. And again, that's what he was doing in his ministry in Central America, so he's probably comfortable doing that, but it's just, that's a red flag. Another red flag, uh, he has an endorsement page by people who endorse this translation. One of them is this guy, Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson is a very well-known uh, word of faith, slash prosperity gospel preacher. And this is the, the word of faith, prosperity gospel, is this false teaching that is just kind of swept through the church where uh, if you're a Christian, if you have enough faith, you'll never be poor and you'll never get sick kind of thing. Just that's the very basic line of it. Um, and it's just crazy because that disregards all the times we see in the Bible of these characters dealing with hard times. You're going to tell Paul that he didn't have enough faith when he was shipwrecked, when he was whipped, when he was stoned. Uh, when he was thrown in prison, that he didn't have enough faith to, avo to avoid that. Or David, King David, when he was running away from Saul and living in caves, he didn't have enough faith there. And uh, it just, it, it causes people to have an unrealistic expectation of God. And anytime something bad happens to them, they blame God because they, they through this teaching, they're thinking, I, sh I should never have bad times. God, why am I fired from work? Why am I having marriage issues? Those type of things. And so that's another red flag that it is it is endorsed by a prosperity gospel teacher slash preacher. So 
So red flags. And as you can tell, I'm uh, just letting you know now, I'm not recommending the Passion Translation. It's not my first, third, fifth, eighth, or tenth translation to recommend. I, I'm, I do not feel comfortable enough even owning the Passion Translation. But one thing I do commend them for here on their own website is that uh, you can go and compare a few, a lot of, actually quite a few, uh, major verses that are in the Bible there, and you can compare them to a few of the major, well-known, well-accepted translations that are out there already, like the King James Version, the NIV, NLT, and the ESV, and you can switch between all these translations plus the Passion Translation just to see how the Passion Translation decided to translate something versus these other well-known, accepted translations. So the Passion Translation, um, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer here. We're just doing one. Luke 11, 2 through 4, it says, the Passion Translation, So Jesus taught them this prayer. Our Heavenly Father, may the glory of your name be the center on which our life, our life turns. Uh, I'm going to use the NIV because it's probably the most popular out of all these. It says this, And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, and then your kingdom come. Okay, same when you pray, KJV, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. NLT, Father, may your name be kept holy. ESV, Father, hallowed be your name. The Passion, our Heavenly Father, may the glory of your name be the center on which our life, life turns. And then this next section here is a reason why I'm hesitant to call the Passion translation an actual translation. If you're going to call it a translation, you almost need to add a plus sign to the end of it because it adds stuff or it uh, assumes stuff that, that we see these other translations, they don't assume. Uh, so it says here, the next part, May your Holy Spirit come upon us and cleanse us. You're like, wait, wait, wait. The Lord's Prayer, that's, that, that part's not in there. KJV, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth. NIV, uh, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. N-O-T. Uh, Father, Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. ESV, your kingdom come. Give us this daily, uh, give us this day your daily bread. Uh, I think when the, the issue I have here, we will go to the K King James Version. Thy will be done as in heaven. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done. I think that's where the Passion Translation gets this. May your Holy Spirit come upon us and cleanse us. Uh, they are uh, assuming that that God that is God's main will for us. Which I mean, there's definitely an argument there. He sent a son to die on a cross for us, so yeah, he wants to make us righteous through the Holy Spirit. But that's not his only will. He has more than just making us righteous. You know, he is a ruler. He is to be worshipped. Uh, he's wanting all these different things, and so it's making an assumption. Uh, from the King James Version, that thy will be done, God, your will be done. That, that will is, may your Holy Spirit come upon us and cleanse us, which I think it is part, one of his wills, but it's not the, all, only, the only part of it. You know, there's more to it. So it adds to it there. It kind of specifies, it gets specific when the other translations decide not to do that. And then moving on here, manifest your kingdom on earth. I have an issue with that as well, NIV. Um, your kingdom come, KJV. Thy kingdom come, NLT. May your kingdom come soon, ESV. Your kingdom come. There's a difference there. Manifest your kingdom on earth. That is saying, here we are on earth, 2023. Bring your kingdom to this earth. But we know throughout scripture that God's kingdom um, will come to the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem will descend from heaven. And so it'll be a new kingdom that will come on a new earth. But manifest your kingdom on this earth, that's saying something a little bit different there. That's saying this earth that we're at right now, Lord, descend your kingdom on that. But we see in Scripture that that's not the case there. I don't know. All these, I'm just reading these and I'm, at, I'm seeing how they are changing some things up. They're changing the meaning of some of these verses here. In verse 3, And give us our needed bread for the coming day. KJV. Uh, give us day by day our daily bread. NIV. Give us each day our daily bread. So that's, that's fine. NLT. Uh, give us each day the food we need. Uh, that, ooh, NLT. I understand what you're saying there, but bread of life, you missed that NLT. Okay, Jeff, I see that. Bread of life, 
The Lord is the bread of life, and you shall not hunger when you come to him anymore. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of myself. Anyways, bread of life. Um, forgive our sins as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Passion. KJV. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. NIV. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Okay? And then the final part. And rescue us from every time we face tribulations. KJV, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. They decided to use temptation and evil. NIV, and lead us not into temptation. NLT, and don't let us yield to temptation. ESV, and lead us not into temptation. Going back to the King James, I think what's happening here is they're taking both of these ideas, both temptation and deliver us from evil, to say, rescue us, rescue us every time we face tribulations. The issue I have with this is that temptations can fall under the umbrella of tribulations, but tribulation uh, can include temptations, but it's more than just that. Uh, tribulations can be trials, can be challenges that you face in this earth, um, and part of that temptations can be a tribulation in your life as well, but it's not interchangeable in that way. KJV, but deliver us from evil. Well, if you're, if you're facing a hard time, that's probably evil. Um, so maybe that's why they're trying to, they use the word tribulations there, just a combination of temptation and evil. But it's just, there's a difference between temptations and tribulations. There's a difference. And by changing this word here, um, Compared to all the other translations that include temptation there, it just changes the meaning of that sentence. And when you look at the original Greek there, the word that is used, both, it's interchangeable. You can use, they put trials, I believe, versus tribulation is trials and, uh, one sec here, let, should we find out? I'm going to pause really quick. Hey, blue letter. Oh! Well, there we are. I just deleted it. Anyways, <laughs> you got a real life reaction there because I just stopped my screen record. Anyways, um, Blue Letter Bible they is a good resource for you. You can look at the original, um, original language there, and the word that is used for temptations there, it puts trials, um, and it does every other thing. It's gonna cut this out, but I'm gonna look it up really quick for you. So temptations is the word parasmos. Strong's G, 3986, Pyrasmas. Ooh, I was, way off. I was way off there. Um, but that definition, the way it's been used in the Bible, is an experiment, attempt, a trial, a proving. Um, uh, you know, a trial proving the trial made of you by my bodily condition. So that's what temptation comes from. And then deliver us from evil. That is porneros. Let's see how wrong I got that. Strong's G, 4190. Paneras. <laughs> Paneras. Apparently I don't speak Greek that well. Anyways, uh, so that's full of labors, annoyances, hardships. And so I can see them deliver us from evil using the word tri uh, tribulations, but... Um, and temptation does fall under tribulations. It's just... It doesn't specify it like that, though. The King James does both. It specifies the tribulations and it specifies the temptations as well. That is used in the original language. So it just kind of changes up the meaning of that passage. So because of these things, man, this game video. Because of these things, um, I'm not recommending the Passion Translation, especially if you're just getting out to study the Word of God. Um, if you're just getting your new Christian, don't do the Passion Translation. There's plenty of other good translations. NIV, uh... NLT, and if you're looking for a word-for-word -word translation, NASB, it's not as smooth flowing sentences, but it's like, okay, this word is the closest equivalent we have in the English language to the original language, so that's a good translation as well there too. But the passion, um, just closing off here, you ready? I would put the message over the passion translation. I would recommend the message before the passion translation because at least the message is honest in saying it's not a translation, it's a paraphrase. At least it's honest in that way, where the translation, if you are, man, 
assuming things were like adding the Holy Spirit there in the Lord's Prayer, uh, assuming things like that and adding to a translation, then if you're adding to a translation, is it really a translation anymore? Uh, so, yeah. But yeah, message and, and, and passion. I, I put those aside. There's plenty of other good translations out there. And that is my take on the Passion Translation. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hey, if you have any any topics or anything uh, that you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah. And hit that subscribe button. It's encouraging to see those numbers going up. But with all that said, thanks for watching. Uh, have a blessed day. Hey, we're talking about Bible translations. The reason the Bible translations are being translated into a language that you can read is so that you can read them and study it and know what God's will is for your life. People sometimes wonder, or they ask, God, I want you to show me a sign. Show me yourself. Reveal me to you. And he already has in the Bible. So read the Bible. It's good for you. It'll encourage you. It'll tell you more about God. Um, and I'll tell you his plans for this world and for your life as well. So study the word of God. But with all that said, be blessed. Have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one.